Well, hello there! Welcome to this video, where we are going to, once again, ruin the dreams of everybody who makes homebrew on D&D Beyond. <laughs> Look, we've done this before. We've looked at spells. We've looked at subclasses. Today, we're looking at feats, alright? How many of those you got? Probably two. Most D&D characters have, like, six. That's kind of weird. Why do they got so many of those? It's because they walk a lot and they need more of them. Okay, the, the feet joke is overdone and overused and I'm not gonna perpetuate it. Feats isn't features, like features for your character, things that you can give your character, sort of like perks, abilities that you will get as you level up. Like some classes get more, some classes get less. And uh, these are some options that you can maybe give your character. Maybe you're leveling up in fighter and you're like, hmm, I want something to really spice up my character. Really want something that really speaks to my character to give them a new ability. You know, you can look through those books. What, what do we got? Telekinesis? <laughs> don't need it. Athlete? Mm -mm. I don't need that. Charger? No. You know what I need? Thousand Miles by Ted Ursi. I have not read these ahead of time. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Thousand Miles. You may take this feat if you are not greater than level four and have a constitution of nine or less. So, what? So if you are if you are not greater than level four, why did you just say you can take this feat if you're not level? Wait, now I'm getting confused. If you are not greater than level four, oh uh, yeah. Also, you must have traveled through the wilderness on foot, bolded and italicized. Jeremy Crawford, Chris Perkins, guys, just start bolding and italicizing things that are really important. I know you bold all the monsters. But sometimes I just, I just really need to know if I if it's on foot. This just screams a DM who like Ted Ursi created this feat, and then his players were like, oh, I traveled the uh, bunch throughout the wilderness on a horse, uh, and I'm just gonna do it in circles for a long time, or I got an airship and I'm just gonna do it. And he was like, I'll show them, I'll show them, and I'll, I'll put on foot so you can't cheese my feet also you must have traveled through the wilderness on foot for 45 of the last 60 days or have traveled on foot from one known point to another thousand miles apart without your breaks in travel totaling more than 15 days all right a lot of prerequisites here already there's like a window in which you can take this feat and what great benefit would i get for all of this i get to add two to my constitution so okay so i get to have an 11 maximum adjust all previous hit die rolls to reflect your new constitution <laughs> yeah you do that anyways adjust all your other stats that your weak constitution <laughs> that your weak constitution had effect <laughs> you have to travel for, 45 of 60 days, and then, and only then, can you add a plus two to your constitution. When you take a feat, you are already allowed to raise your constitution by two, adjusting all previous hit die rolls and stats. In other words, this feat is weaker than the existing rules, yeah. Is this just ASI, but with added stipulations? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Adrenaline surge. <laughs> Prerequisites. Requires. <laughs> You have honed the art of battle as if a dance. The angrier you become, the, mo f the more ferocious you are. A raging barbarian is child's play compared to your ferocity. I always love these like bad homebrews because they, they always have these like really intense descriptions. Like if I just describe it hard enough, then it'll be cool. Like you're, you're, you're so angry that like it's a raging barbarian is child's play compared to you. It's funny, they all have that in common. <sighs> ah, my favorite feat. Can't touch this. Oh my god, there's so many abilities to this. You've been pushed to the brink more times than you can count. Okay, these these feats are so aggressive. They're they're never just like so you get this little ability, you get to have this little thing. They're always just like, enough, enough playing around, okay? You, you are God. Everything you've done, child's play. People who murder, nothing compared to your brutality. And then it's always some ability like, oh, uh, you get plus two to AZ. You've been pushed to the brink more times than you can count. As a response, your body has learned to automatically react offensively and defensively to a threat. How? Like describe how that happens. You don't. You don't have to explain 
why it's happening, you could just explain what it does because that's the point of a fee. I get to come up with why it's happening. Add plus 10 to you initiative, add 30 to your speed. All right. That's uh, really overpowered. You have advantage on dexterity and strength saving throws. That's really strong. While you are wearing light or no armor and wielding no shield, your AC includes your class modifier and your dexterity modifier. You gain the monk class feature flurry of blows. <laughs> you are immune to the following effects. Grappled, paralyzed, petrified, prone, restrained, stunned, and unconscious. What is this? Whenever a melee attack against you misses, you move up to 10 feet away from the aggressor. You get the mobile feet. On, on any initiative rolls, you can choose to strike any one enemy within 5 feet of you for- What? On your first attack of the combat, you may triple the damage dice of your weapon. This does not apply to sneak attack dice. Oh good, I'm glad it doesn't apply to sneak attack dice. We, we, we gotta- we gotta balance it somewhere. Whenever you score a critical hit, you may also double your ability modifier when calculating damage. Your con bonus to health is doubled each time you level. Okay, who, what angry player was like, dude, he's hard. I have all of this, so I could be way better. Like, who took the time out of their day to make this? Who, like, who, I can only imagine somebody made this to be like, oh, the only way I could survive in your campaign, Dungeon Master, is if I had this feat because it's just so hard. Normally when making something, the goal shouldn't be to make it something you have to take in order to remain relevant. There would be literally no reason to not take this feat ASAP, if not at level one as a variant human. Like, holy hell, this feat would make there be a zero reason at all to play anything other than variant human just to take this at level one. Also, the bit about not tripling sneak attack dice is superfluous since sneak attack dice aren't weapon dice, so they wouldn't get tripled even without the clarification. <laughs> what does immunity to unconsciousness even do? Full power, 100%. We <laughs> I love these short ones. If they're just like a sentence, it's like my favorite. When you use 100% full power, your physical dex and strength max 30 for one hour. Whoa! Once you use this feat, you cannot do so again after 1d4 days. Yeah, you just go, you just go Super Saiyan, you just use 100% of your full power. You just go, um, what is the, what is the thing called? Hang on, let me call Colton. Hey, are you busy right now? Uh, not super, what's up? I just need to ask you a question. Um, so there's this feat on DD Beyond, uh, that has negative 59 points, uh, called full power 100%. Um, and I'm trying to remember, because it reminded me of, like, going Super Saiyan. They don't go Super Saiyan. They, what's the, like, the ultimate power that they have? Ultra Instinct? <laughs> Thank you. You go Ultra Instinct. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's Ultra Instinct. Adept training requires a dexterity score of 13 uh, 13 or higher and wisdom score of 13 or higher. Having spent decades honing and training your mind and body, you will finally become the ultimate weapon. Unlike traditional warriors who- wait, hang on, this this one so far is 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 written okay, this one's written fine, what's wrong with this one? Having spent decades honing and training your mind and body, you have finally become the ultimate weapon. Unlike traditional warriors who may use a wide assortment of variety of weaponry, the simplicity of unarmed or close quarter combat is one that appeals to your nature. Due to the extensive physical and mental training that you had to endure as a student, you are comfortable in your capabilities. Why does this have negative 51 points? This one, this one's kind of cool. It's, it's written pretty well. But there's always room for improvement. Okay. So what have you truly mastered? Your mind or your body? Why aren't you... I've never had a feat ask me questions. You persuaded me elegantly to train my physical and mental portions of my body. The simplicity of unarmed or close quarter combat is one that appeals to my nature. I, I, I understand this, Makwa. Now, why do, why must I choose? Increase either dexterity or wisdom score by two. Makwa, you fucked it up, Makwa. That's just an ability score improvement. That is an ASI. You gave an ability score improvement flavor text. Absolve sin. Okay. <laughs> Why are we going into the goofy zone again? <laughs> Absolve sin. Must be a cleric, paladin, or trained by someone who knows the spell. The Absolve Sin spell? This is this is a spell? I don't remember that being a spell. You may absolve the wicked of their sins at will. This spell only affects neutral or evil aligned humanoids. A willing sinner need only confess their sins, okay? <laughs> their alignment is changed to good for 24 hours. And the state of their mortal souls wipe clean in the eyes of the gods. After the spell expires, the creature returns to their old alignment. This this is a spell. This is not 
This is not a feat. Absolving the sins from someone causes the absolver to take necrotic damage equal to 1d6 plus absolved character's level. The sin is stored in your body as black ichor. You may vomit that necrotic ichor at any time in a 30 foot cone. If your health points are reduced to zero before you can purge the necrotic energy, your character dies and your body turns to ash. You do not make death saves. Do not pass a go and collect $200. Okay. Go straight to hell. Whoa! <laughs> we, 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 we went back and forth there. We were like, your body turns to ash. You do not make death saves. Do not pass go and collect $200. Go straight to hell! Not hell with one L. Not an outer plane. <laughs> Where's this narrative going? It's like these feats have stories. Go straight to hell. Not hell. Not an outer plane. Endless torment in the... In the Judeo-Christian hell. If you die in this state, you cannot be revived with anything less than a witch spell. Planes walking into the land of fire and brimstone to wretch your friend from the clawed hands of Lucifer himself. Uh huh. That's a little much for a feat. <laughs> I I don't I, I don't have anything to say about this one. Um I uh, I just gonna say that why wouldn't you just vomit the ichor immediately? As soon as you absolve those sins, just be like there. Now I won't die and go to actual hell. And I will not pass go and collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> Creator. <laughs> Ah, I can't. Some of these are just so funny. You just open them and it's one tiny sentence. Creator, you can create the game and control the game. Fucking congratulations, everybody. Found the greatest feat in all of Dungeons and Dragons. Bob and Weave, you learn how to take advantage of creature missing their attacks against you. Wow. How do I do that? Is there any rules? Uh, mixed in with that right there. Is there anything else I could do with that? How does this work mechanically? Okay, okay, easy fill 24. Why did you spend this much time writing a comment for this? How does this work mechanically? Can you use your reaction to attack when the enemy misses like the battle master's repost maneuver? Okay, you're just being an asshole. A uh, agile like a cat. Prerequisite, you need to be dexterous like a cat. Oh, that sounds easy enough. You gain the agility of a cat. I, I, th I already had to be dexterous like one. You gain the ability to run up walls. You gain slow fall. That, all right, well, you know, that one's fine. Jerk's constitution. You're tough, and it's a pain to put you down a real jerk. <laughs> what does this mean? What is it, what is, why did you capitalize the jerk? Gain one in con. You gain proficiency in con. And if you are already proficient, you double it. You can't gain proficiency in constitution. This is an ability. You're supposed to gain proficiency in skills. You don't know how the game works. Advanced programming. Your advan- You have to be a warforged. Okay. Your advanced mind is able to learn things at an extremely fast rate. When you take this feat, you can take two feats the next time you gain it. Hang on. Wait. Whoa. This is awesome. You just forego this level of feat, and then the next time you get one, you get two, so you just feel really awesome for taking two feats at the same time. This is just delayed a feat. You just don't get your feat until later. It's feat insurance. <laughs> Zone of truth. Allows to cast his own truth. <laughs> cool. God damn it. These were way more funny than I thought I was going to be. And you know, I'll, if you are one of those people that wrote one of those ridiculous feats, just let you know, you made me laugh. And I love you for that. So thank you. We're going to end today's video with doing something a little positive. We're going to go to this little rating right here. I'm going to just turn that guy right around. I wasn't expecting this. Vaccinated. Prerequisite, must be a human or human hybrid from another plane. Whether because of your parents or the requirements set forth in your schooling, you have received several vaccinations over the course of your life. These have bolstered your immune system without any long-term serious side effects, despite the warnings of charlatans and soothsayers. You receive immunity from disease due to the increased antibodies in your system, as well as gaining advantage on all constitution saving throws. Plus, you are helping to create herd immunity and raising the overall health of the realms. That's a uh, really wholesome Canda bar wanderer. I think this is really funny that you wrote this in 2017. <laughs> a true oracle, really, Canda bar wanderer. Get vaccinated, guys. Go get vaccinated. Seriously, people are dying. Go get vaccinated. So yeah, guys. Thanks for joining. This was a fun time. 
make sure that when you're taking your feats, you aren't just trying to break the entirety of the game system, and that you have a real reason to take it besides being angry for no reason at all. It is now the end of the video. That, that was a video.